Okay, I want to say welcome to our listeners out there. Notifications are going out. We are streaming live. Let's come off of this. And I want to say hello to, right now, it's going to be overseas. Uh, most of us uh, here in the U.S. are sleeping, although notifications going out unexpectedly. And we're going to wait till we get a little uh, uh, feedback. I just want to say hello. I'm Dr. Mandel. Today we're going to be talking about uh, bone spurs and osteophytes. Uh, this can obviously be your pain. Hello, Australia. I'm expecting people on the other side of the world to listen to us tonight, but this will be recorded uh, on our channel. So if you do not catch this whole uh, broadcast, you will catch it on. Today we're going to talk about uh, bone spurs, osteophytes. What are these things? These bone spurs are, wow, these uh, can really get to us. Let me just show you just something really simple, a heel. If you look at that bone spur right there, I'm going to leave this up just for a couple of minutes. I want to say hello to all our uh, live chat in there. I want to say welcome. Thank you for being here from India and Canada. Uh, so if you look at that bone spur, let's just first talk a little bit about bone spurs, give you an understanding what this is, uh, what it's about. Uh, many of us have this that don't even know it. How do we get these things? Uh, uh, the bone spur generally is called an osteophyte. An osteophyte is a tiny pointed outgrowth in the bone. And this can occur in all joints of the body. It can happen in the neck, happen in the, the elbow, the hip, the low back, happening in the knees, the ankles. I will show you some x-rays and I'll go over some different bone spurs that you can have an understanding. And I'll tell you a little bit how they're caused and what we can do to try to combat these things. But these bone spurs uh, generally occur when there's inflammation. Inflammation means that there's stress in a joint. Usually it occurs uh, when there's more weight bearing, if you're more overweight, if there's injuries to an area, if it's something that's accumulatively used over and over and over, depending upon their location. Uh, bone spurs develop in areas of inflammation or injuries nearby cartilage or tendons. Quite common. Um, I, in my type of occupation and, and me being an athlete when I was younger, um, I developed calcification of the supraspinatus tendon. I wish I had my x-ray. I can show you. But in my shoulder, and I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But uh, many of you who have pain don't uh, may not understand that you may have a bone spur that's affecting the nerve or causing the inflammation or affecting the function of the joint. Uh, this can cause, for example, a spur in the neck, which I'm about to show you, uh, can cause, uh, let's go to it right now while, while I'm on that right now. Uh, if you look here, this bone spur in the neck, uh, this can be affecting the nerve that's coming out, going into the arm, into the hand, or into the chest, or between the, the shoulder blades. Uh, neck pain, burning, tingling, numbness, cramping. Uh, you can see that spur that is degenerative changes, more commonly seen in forward head posture. Now, if you're new to this uh, chat or you're new to the video, when you see this on my channel, I really recommend you go to my videos I have hundreds of great self-help videos if you are new, uh, and many of them are in forward head posture and things you can do to prevent these spurs and degeneration from occurring. Now, we're all going to degenerate, but we need to slow the degeneration process down. So if you go to the doctor, you say, I'm having pain. The doctor takes an x-ray and he says, wow, look at the spur you have on your neck. You are never going to know that you have a spur if it's your neck, your lower back, your hip, or even underneath the heel, a heel spur, unless you see it on an x-ray. You're not going to know otherwise. Uh, many things can cause pain, but many uh, times bone spurs can aggravate the condition. Now, most people who have bone spurs don't even know they have bone spurs. So I want you just to keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, so when we look at these bone spurs, generally remember, there's a few things I want you to understand that goes hand in hand with them. There's usually inflammation. There's usually excessive stress on an area. There's usually an old injury. It can be usually to a chronic cumulative trauma problem that you're doing some repetitively over and over and over. It could be coming, for example, let's look uh, over here. Um, let's go back to this area again here. We look at this heel. This spur generally comes from poor fitted shoes, uh, maybe jogging, running on hard surfaces, uh, a fallen arch, uh, pronated feet 
where the inside of your feet are, are, are rounding inwards, causing it to pronate. You may notice the outside of your heels are wearing out more than any other. This heel spur here shows us uh, a, a plantar, possibly a mild fasciitis or fasciitis. Uh, when the fascia becomes stretched underneath the foot, and a, again, if you have this problem, look at my video on plantar fasciitis. A great video, many different things you can do to help it. Uh, but this can be coming from extra stress, extra pulling on that tendon where it attaches in the bone. Remember, bones uh, have tendons that form into muscle, the belly, and off the belly is a tendon on both sides. So when the muscle squeezes, it pulls. So generally where the rain is being pulled excessively is where the body is going to start uh, depositing calcium because of that instability. And I'm going to show you and explain to you why and how that happens. So I understand you may not understand uh, that what I'm telling you, but you're going to understand in just a few seconds. I'm going to get to that in just a second. So uh, let's look at a few different x-rays to give you a, a, an understanding here of what we're talking about. Uh, you look at the vertebrae uh, right here, you can see bone spurs. That's the body of a vertebrae. The disc is between the rough edges. Uh, you can look at the lower back. You can see bone spurs. When you always notice when you see bone spurs, you're having degeneration. Uh, this could be from an old fall, an old injury, being overweight, poor posture, sitting, doing things repetitively, having vibrations, maybe driving all day long and putting vibration on your back, uh, maybe leaning over, doing wrong uh, tasks that can be leading to lots of stress and irritation. Uh, look at this here. Here's a really severe degenerative problem. Those are spurs, those little pointy things sticking out. Uh, you can see those are called osteophytes. And osteophytes uh, are the spurs that are being laid down. And we're going to use a word called osteoblastic. Osteoblastic means that the body is taking calcium and making it grow to fulfill a weakness, either from a, the ligaments, the tendons, or an area within the spine to try to stabilize it. But the brain doesn't know better. The brain is just telling the body to do it, but it doesn't mean it's the right thing because it thinks it's in like a tremendous amount of uh, distress or a tremendous amount of weakness. So the brain is kind of telling the body to do things to try to stabilize something that really needs to be corrected from the cause. Look at these, look at this knee. Uh, very bad. This is about ready to have a, a knee replacement. Very narrow joint, bone on bone, cartilage on cartilage, osteophyte, spur coming off that area. That is really nasty. And I see quite a, quite a bit of those. More commonly seen in obese people. More weight bearing, more stress, and it's going to degenerate. Again, there's a neck again, the bone spurs. Here's another picture of the knee from the front view. Those are spurs. Uh, again, degeneration. Those are bone spurs. See the yellow right there? Those are little spurs coming out off that knee. Okay, here's a hip. Look at that spur right there. That is degeneration in the hip joint. That spur is the body's response to instability. Look at the shoulder here. Look at the size of that spur. I mean, that's, that's a really nasty spur. That's a, where that red circle is. You can see that real pointy thing. That is a huge spur, and there, that is something that is pretty serious. Here's another knee here. Degeneration spurs off to the side of the femur on both sides. Uh, here is another neck here. You can see more pronounced bone spurs. But I want to let you know about the spine. The nerves come out. Let me just show you here. The nerves come out in the back part. Okay, this is the way you're looking at that model. Just kind of like this. If I turn it, this is how it looks in the picture. But I'm trying to, to match it. But the front of the vertebrae, you don't have nerves. Only in the back part. So... You can have spurs in the front part of the vertebrae and have no symptoms ever. But if those neurological structures in the back part are being affected from those spurs, it's going to cause lots of pain. And the last one is the ankle here. Uh, that's a really arthritic ankle. Okay, so we understand that spurs come from areas of instability. Very important that you understand that. If you keep putting the body in an unstable position, the body will keep degenerating and you will keep developing spurs. When surgeons see these spurs, they want to take them out. But they will grow back if this instability is still there. Let's go up. Let's move off a little bit in the education. Uh, there are 
a few different types of bone cells. The osteocytes are the bone cells that stay within the bone. The osteoblasts are the bone forming cells. The osteoclasts uh, are the bone destructing or destroying cells. So in order for the body to remodel, you must have an equal balance of osteoblasts and osteoclasts doing its job. Remember, we look at osteoblasts as uh, something to stimulate uh, growth and osteoclasts to take away or kind of break down in bone remodeling. So when you look at this here, uh, actually we'll come back to that in just a second. If you look at the osteoclast, the osteoclast can be like the carnivore. It chews off the bone. The osteoblast uh, kind of fills in that bone. So in other words, if you fracture a bone, uh, the osteoblast will try to fulfill the fracture. But if there's a significant amount of inflammation in the bone, then uh, and it becomes an acidic environment, the osteoclasts start to take over, particularly after the age of 30 years of age, and they can lead to a lot of osteopenia, a lot of osteoporosis because of the metabolism of the bone. Remember, the parathyroid gland affects the osteoclastic activity, and if the osteoblasts, which don't keep up as well as we get older, uh, that can cause destruction and problems in bones. But when it comes down to bone remodeling, uh, there is something I want to share with you. It's called Wolf's Law. And uh, generally, the worst thing that we can do when we have a problem is not be having weight bearing. Years ago, they used to say people with sciatica and pain down the leg just to have complete bed rest. And we found that people who had less stress on the bone that was always in bed had more potential problems of developing osteoporosis and weakening of the bone. Generally, when we look at uh, bone remodeling, um, let me just see if I can find it here. If you look at this, uh, generally where there is stress on the bone, Wolf's Law states that in dynamics, he will or your body will remodel and strengthen that area that has more stress on the joint. So generally when you have a problem or you just had a surgery or a hip surgery and you're not putting weight bearing on it, you need to make sure you put weight bearing on that area. I just want to throw a little bit about osteoblastic activity uh, versus osteoclastic activity. Osteoblasts are building bone, osteoclasts are destructing bone. So if you have an area, let's come back here. So if you have a heel spur, what are we doing here? We're putting excessive stress on the bone. There's inflammation. Is when you have inflammation, the osteoclasts are obviously trying to, uh, you know, wear, wearing, wearing and tearing. But in the same token, in these situations, because of the extra stress, the osteoblasts keep working day after day after day after day to keep building and building and building because this area is unstable. So that tells us that if you have a heel spur or if you have a problem going on in the joints of the vertebrae, if it's your lower back, you have spurs, you need to get that stress off of that area. If it's your knees, you need to lose weight if you have obesity. If it's your neck, you need to correct the forward head posture. If it's your hip, you need to really beware because there's something causing that to become inflamed. Your shoulders may be from being an athlete, maybe having a trauma. Uh, but again, there is a source of everything. And I want you to know that. Now, I just want to bring out a couple very important things that you're saying, well, how do I get rid of these? Well, if the body can lay down uh, fibrous strength and, and bone of, of osteoblastic activity, it means it can always take it away. It's always trying to work in balance. But one of my favorite things when it comes down to reducing inflammation in the body is apple cider vinegar. Okay. Apple cider vinegar within six months has took it's taken away about 65, almost 70 percent of my calcific tendinosis in my rotator cuff. I was shocked. I took MRI six months ago, MRI just recently, and I was shocked. I've seen apple cider vinegar in the past take away lots of heel spurs. Primarily one tablespoon, three times a day, to eight ounces of water, and that seems to 
dissolve a lot of the calcium changes, not only in bones, but in arteries and in, in soft tissue. You can look at our other videos that we've been doing, uh, but that is like a miracle thing. I want to tell you that. A few other things, when there's inflammation, use cold compresses. I like ginger. Ginger is a great, uh, a great thing to reduce inflammation and swelling. Uh, again, I love the apple cider vinegar. One of my favorites, the turmeric, the curcumin, uh, the boswellia, excellent anti-inflammatories if you're having pain. Uh, chamomile, I like. It helps settle down the system. Epsom salt, you can soak in. Uh, and again, you want to make sure you take the stresses off the area. If you keep having the stresses, uh, it's going to give you a problem. And one other thing I want to leave uh, with you guys uh, Coconut oil not only is good for reducing triglycerides, cholesterol, uh, and massage, and it has lauric acid and other great anti-inflammatory compounds in it, extra virgin coconut oil. You can take the coconut oil and you can rub it into the joint. There are studies, things that I've been reading that states that it helps with bone spurs. All right, you're asking me how, why. I'm telling you, I read many blogs. People swear by this. I haven't done it personally. But they state that the coconut oil has like magical medicinal properties. So um, I hope that this gives you a little better understanding about osteoblasts, osteoclasts, a little bit about spurs. Um, and, you know, I, I welcome you guys and, and ladies, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm trying to work on that, on my vocabulary there. Uh, I welcome uh, all of you out there to subscribe out there and uh, please uh, share these videos uh, many people have really benefited from these. There are, are hundreds of thousands of people. I get so many, so many uh, responses, positive responses. YouTube's taken our videos, our self-help videos, put them up on top of the charts. Um, this is really helping a lot of people. So um, I want to give thanks to our chat room for, for being here with us. Uh, let's go over in a, a couple things. Uh, here is someone mentioning an end plate spur. An end plate spur is primarily uh, the spur of just on the the vertebrae. In other words, if you look at the body of the vertebrae, let's see if I can bring it up for you while we're on this topic here. Uh, by the way, I want to let you know now, uh, the end plates are the top of those vertebrae. Uh, and you can see those are some end plates over there. If you look at the low back here, those are end plates. End plates are on the top of the vertebrae, and that's generally where they spur a lot. They will spur off the top of those end plates. Uh, so, anyways, just to let you know, Facebook, I want, I'd like you to come and like our Facebook uh, uh, page. We're getting a lot of action there. Uh, the same name, Motivational Doc, easier to ask questions there. I get hundreds of emails a day through uh, through here, YouTube, and they come into my, e my inbox, and it's literally imp impossible for me to answer all those. I used to answer them all the time. I used to spend hours, but now... Um, we're getting so many people worldwide. We're touching many hearts. We're helping many, many people. So uh, Facebook, uh, Motivational Doc, come join. Ask, you know, throw your stuff on that page. Do whatever you can do. And uh, let's continue to keep staying educated, keep loving, keep sharing. And uh, most important, I really appreciate people out there in the chat room spending your time, your love in these late hours if you are in the U.S. to come out and become educated. I want to say God bless to everyone. And have a wonderful uh, night here in the U.S. and wonderful day across seas. And we'll catch up with you real soon now.